In this lesson, we're talking about transport systems in complex animals. We're in unit one, topic one, and we are building on these particular points, but really specifically going into the cardiovascular system today. All right, so given that multicellular organisms have the capacity to differentiate their cells by doing specialist jobs, they can take advantage of this by building really complex tissues to do these complex jobs. So we want to transport nutrients and gases and wastes and all that kind of thing around the body. So it's really vital that supplying every single cell type in every location uh, we need to give them the molecules that they need to do their job. So the circulatory system does this. So we're talking blood, blood vessels and the heart here. It's also called the cardiovascular system. All right, so there are two kinds of cardiovascular systems we're going to speak about. They're open and they're closed. So closed ones, this one in particular, they have a closed, oh, no, I lie, I'm sorry, this one's closed. They have closed tubing systems, so think pipes or hoses or something like that, and it's got a pump. Now, these are usually one directional. They pump in one way, but there are multiple chambers in a heart sometimes, and all, which is the pump of the system, in order to stop the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood to mix. However, obviously, there's different complexities in this system. So ours is quite comple complex, sorry, this one less so. There are also open systems, okay, and the grasshopper is an example of that. This is an open system, meaning there's, there's some vessels, but not a lot. The blood is not quite blood as we know it. It's called hemolymph, and it's mainly water. What happens is it moves away from the pump, and it can, you know, you can see here it's moving away in this direction and that direction, but it's moving away from the pump, and it just kind of perfuses into the surrounding tissue. It's not in the same way that it kind of keeps circulating like in our system. We are going to focus on mammalian transport systems particularly. Okay, in the mammalian circuitry system, we are talking the heart, the blood, and the vessels. They are our main components, and it's very complex, but it boils down to just these ones. Now, I could talk for an entire term on this system, so remember, this is just an overview. It's a very complex system. Okay, the heart in our system is a double circulate. Circul circulatory oh sorry it's a double circulation system okay what happens is the heart here pumps blood to the lungs all the way up here okay once it picks up it picks up the oxygen from the lungs it returns back to the heart and then it's pumped all the way out to the tissues so that all the cells can pick up that oxygen and then it comes back around to the heart essentially to be uh, you know replenished with oxygen back in the lungs again heart has four separate chambers. It has two at the top called atria or an atrium, and the two down the bottom are known as ventricles. Now, the blood must pass from an atrium down into a ventricle before it is pumped out. In this case, it's going from the, you'll see this is called the right side because it's on your right side, okay, facing outwards, and then it's pumped out to the lungs. Then it picks up the oxygen at the lungs and it comes back in, oops, sorry, via the left atria and then comes through into the ventricle and then is pumped out via this uh, large organ, a large vessel called the aorta. Okay, four separate chambers. It doesn't allow that mixing to happen. Deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood. If it goes to the lungs, it's picked up the oxygen, it's oxygenated. Now there are valves in between uh, all these, or the atria and the ventricle, you can see kind of in here, it's a bit messy. Um, and it stops that backflow from happening. And obviously there can be problems with your heart where you do have a backflow and it's mixing the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood. Now that's what a heart looks like when you cut it open. It's not purple, it's not pink, it's not red, it's whatever, but it is quite complicated. It's not as nicely stacked up as we see in some of these diagrams, but you know, you can still actually find all those different chambers and you can definitely see the valves. Okay, blood is quite a complex liquid. It's got many components within it as well. It's not just a red goo. Now, one of the main components is the plasma, and that's the liquid component. It allows for the flow of all the other components. Okay, it's like that lubricant, but it also dissolves nutrients and waste so that they can be delivered in or out or taken away wherever they need to go, and they can be filtered out in the relevant organ uh, organs, right? So the red blood cells are also there. They're a donut-shaped cell. They contain a lot of hemoglobin, a protein, which allows it to carry oxygen and carbon dioxide oxide around to the tissues and it's picking it up in the lungs the oxygen in the lungs taking it to the tissues perfusing out the oxygen uh, stays within the cells sorry and the carbon dioxide comes back in and then it's removed via the lungs again there are also white blood cells they're participating in an, in an immune response when you're getting sick or there's foreign bodies in your uh, in your system and there are also platelets and their job is to uh, help with clotting and closing up wounds and things like that 
Importantly, though, there's blood vessels, right? And these are the pipes that all the blood is, is traveling through. You will see this depicted in red and blue. They aren't these color. Um, you know, veins appear blue because the skin absorbs red light uh, better than blue and blue is reflected, which is why our eyes register that they're blue. But our, our oxygenated blood is that little bit brighter red and our deoxygenated blood is a bit darker. Okay, arteries, really important. They transport blood away from the heart. And most of the time, the blood is oxygenated unless it's moving it away just to pick up the oxygen at the lungs. So every organ and every tissue in the body is serviced by at least one artery, usually more, including the heart itself. So the heart has to supply itself with blood to keep itself pumping. And the blood is moving at a really high pressure. So the walls and the arteries have to be able to withstand that pressure um, without bulging or bursting. So they're really tough, they're really strong, and they're very elastic. Veins are the opposite and they return the blood to the heart, usually with deoxygenated blood, except when it's returning from the lungs. That's the only exception. Now these are at a much lower pressure. Okay, so the walls don't need to be quite as thick and there's fewer muscles and elastin fibers around the outside. Now they dilate to be really, really wide and they can hold up to 80% of the total blood volume. Now, gravity and skeletal muscles, they're relied upon to get the blood back up. So you think about all the blood pooling in your feet, your skeletal muscles kind of have to push it back up to get it all the way back up to the heart. So that's why sometimes fidgeting or going for a walk or whatever can actually get your blood pumping or get your blood moving back up to the heart. There's little valves all the way through these veins, again, to stop that backflow happening. All right, and here's our important one for today, capillaries. Capillaries branch, oh sorry, not capillaries, arteries branch off into smaller pathways called arterioles, and eventually they branch into something smaller called capillaries, which is the same thing that's happening for your veins and your venules, okay? The big ones get to smaller roads and then you're talking these tiny kind of backway streets, essentially. Now the capillaries form networks and they branch and they rejoin and they, you know, mesh and they do all that because they have to touch on every single cell in the body. They have to service every single cell. So they're the small intermediary between the arteries and the, uh, and the veins. And this is where the actual gas exchange is happening. Okay, the oxygen is deposited out and the carbon dioxide waste is picked up in the capillaries. Sometimes the capillaries are so small that they can only actually have the red blood cells go through in single file. And the sides or the walls of the capillaries are so thin, and that's only to, uh, only to allow that diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide in and out so it's diffusing from the red blood cells through the wall of that um the cell essentially that's making the wall of the capillary and then out again to whatever tissue needs it okay quite a lot going on there please make sure you review write some notes <laughs>